Dr. Eric Feigelding is, is with us. Uh, our red state's uh, COVID deaths about to skyrocket. He's the epidemiologist and health economist, adjunct senior fellow of the American Federation of Scientists, uh, FAS.org. His uh, Twitter handle, uh, which I follow and, and uh, avidly, is Dr. Uh, Dr. Eric, E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G. Uh, Dr. Feigelding, welcome back to the program. I'm, I'm so glad to have you on. There's a number of things that I, I wanted to ask you about. The first is is this Delta variant, uh, the sometimes referred to as the Indian variant or out of India, um, that it, it seems to be just ripping through the world, particularly the UK right now. They've they've postponed their opening, and uh, the CDC just issued a report yesterday indicating that large, a huge number of American counties, almost all of them counties that Donald Trump carried in the last election, have vaccination rates below 25 percent. Are we looking at a real problem here in the United States? Are we looking at massive death and disease as a con in these counties, specifically, as a consequence of the lack of vaccination? Yeah, that's a very good question. Thanks for having me back. Um, sure. it, this pandemic has come a long ways, and we have seen the Delta variant, a.k.a. the Indian variant, ravage India. India's lost well over a million people in the last few months. Um, some people, uh, economists say it could be as high as two, three million, but at, at least a million people, uh, uh, according to economists in the New York Times. And now it's completely dominated UK. UK is seeing rises in cases, rises in hospitalization, uh, especially in children. Children especially is the leading group of people infected, as well as the parents of children, which implies schools. Um, the problem with the Delta variant is it's more contagious. It's about 50% more contagious than the Alpha UK variant, which was already 54% more contagious. That makes it twice as contagious as the original. It's more severe. It's about two and a half times higher risk of hospitalization than the Alpha, which was already 60% higher, which makes it, if you multiply them together, 4x higher than the original strain in terms of hospitalization risk. So it's more contagious, more severe, and one dose of the vaccine is not good protection. One dose of it is about 30% efficacy, uh, whether it's AstraZeneca or Pfizer. Now, two doses, you get 60% of AstraZeneca, 88% with Pfizer, uh, approximately. But one dose is just not enough anymore. And even Dr. Bauchi says uh, one dose is a serious problem. And we know that uh, two-dose vaccination in America is really low. And there's also the issue of Johnson Johnson, which by definition is a one dose. Yeah. So we are facing with potentially uh, another surge in uh, probably August, late July, August, and that really worries me. The, uh, there, were, there was a story that was widely reported a few days ago uh, out of Boston that there were several hundred breakthroughs in fully uh, breakthrough cases, people getting in, infected, uh, fairly severely infected, you know, enough that they're presenting themselves at doctor's offices or hospitals and getting diagnosed. Um, with, uh, with full-blown COVID infections, even though they're fully vaccinated, um, they're still doing the, uh, the DNA work to determine which variant it is. But the, the assumption is that this is a, a pocket of this Delta variant. Um, it, does this mean that, uh, you know, we're going to go back to wearing masks all the time and, and maybe not full lockdown or something like that, but, but that even vaccinated people need to be wary? I, I'm reading that, you know, if it's 93%, even if a fully vaccinated, I'm fully vaccinated with Pfizer, right? If that means that I have 93% prote protection against uh, the Delta variant, which is what Fauci said this morning on NPR, that means there's a 7% chance I'll get that Delta variant. I mean, if I knew that there was a 7% chance that I would die in a car crash driving downtown this afternoon, I wouldn't go. So, you know, what do we make of that? Well, I want to uh, explain that efficacy means, um, you know, 90% lower chance, Not does not imply that you have you know, 10% chance or 7% chance of getting it. Um, but it's not, it's not foolproof. And breakthrough infections do happen. Um, CDC, unfortunately, has stopped tracking it as of May 1st. They Whoa. only track breakthroughs if you get hospitalized or die, which I feel is like a little bit um, uh, too hands-off. I think we should tackle this further. Massachusetts uh, tracks it directly. And they found 500 cases of breakthroughs in the last three weeks. That's pretty high. Um, now, overall, breakthroughs have been about one in 10,000 case uh, vaccinated people. But um, with Delta, we think it's probably higher. 
we've seen many situations in which, uh, in Calgary, for example, there was one hospital, there was uh, many patients infected, and among the six healthcare workers infected, five of the six healthcare workers were double vaccinated with mRNA vaccines. And so even though they didn't get super sick, uh, these healthcare workers, they're suspected to have been part of the outbreak that causes hospital-wide outbreak. In, in terms of you won't get sick sick, but you will pass it to others. That so, is the problem. So, and we have a lot of people who are not vaccinated. Yeah, yeah yesterday on this program, I was going through a, a, a rather remarkable and shocking study showing that among people who had COVID infections that were minimally um, uh, symptomatic, you know, they, 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 get, they had a sore throat, they went, they got checked, yes, you have COVID, but it never went beyond that, right? It basically, almost asymptomatic or even, a, you know, fully asymptomatic. Among that group, a significant percentage, I don't recall the exact percentage, but it was like between 20 and 30 percent, three to six months out, we're beginning to experience symptoms of long COVID, you know, uh, nerve pain, difficulty breathing, chest pains, things like this. Um, is that kind of uh, danger or future what somebody who is fully vaccinated and gets a very, very mild breakthrough infection with the Delta variant or any of the you know, variants can expect? Or are we also, if we're fully vaccinated, not only protected from ending up in the hospital or being dead, but also protected from having long COVID as a consequence of having a mild infection. Right, this long COVID question is a really good one. We don't know enough. Uh, overall, it's about one in seven people uh, who get um, infected people who get long COVID in about 30 days from when you got infected. It's one in 12 in, in kids. Um, but the problem is, that even mild infected people can still have long COVID. Now, there's also evidence that vaccines help reduce long COVID, but we know for sure that there are many cases of long COVID even among fully vaccinated people, and that we have to be extremely careful. This is why in this whole pandemic, my entire approach is precautionary principle. We know vaccines work, they work really well, but you should probably not take out your masks, especially indoors and in crowded, risky situations. And you should probably not take a cruise ship right now. Um, I, I think right now with long COVID, it's the long-term effects that will not just have immediate costs, but long-term burdens to healthcare system, costs to our, our medical system. And I think we should really keep taking precautions. That yeah. until we get back double vaccination up to 80, 90 percent, we should not um, let down our guards. Because the issue is that you hear 70 percent a lot. That's for the original contagiousness. But a more contagious virus needs a higher a herd immunity threshold. And that is, by the way, not one dose vaccination. Two, we're talking about two dose vaccination. Right. Right. Uh, I, and and that is the issue. We're not even even close to that. Parts yeah. of the U.S. are incredibly low level of vaccination. Totally get that. We're going to hit a break in about a minute and a half here. Um, when this when the CDC and and basically the you know the federal government came out and said um, suddenly actually it caught a lot of people by by surprise. Uh, hey, you can you know throw away your mask if you're completely vaccinated. Um, was were they signaling that? If you're fully vaccinated, even if you get an infection, that that's not that big a deal, and that the, and in fact, having the actual infection might even confer some additional long-term immunity. Or were they just running off the numbers? I mean, why would they say that when there is the this kind of risk that we're facing right now, even among people who are fully vaccinated? Yeah, the risk is low, and in certain ways. I think it was a calculated decision. I don't agree with it because the, the main problem I disagree with, A, is vaccinated people can still transmit to unvaccinated people. That's one concern. And two, when you meet an unvaccinated, uh, unmasked person in a grocery store, are they unmasked because they have a vaccine or are they unmasked because they're an anti-masker? That really worries me because everyone, some people have vulnerable kids, vulnerable immunocompromised um, people at home who can't get vaccinated or the vaccine doesn't work well such as the immunocompromised. So that's why we should really keep vigilant and allowing people to take off their masks is just giving anti-maskers further ammo and excuse to go unmasked. 
Yeah. And that only spreads it further, especially with the variants. Yeah, I totally get it. Dr. Eric Feigelding, uh, FAS.org. Follow him on Twitter, D-R-E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G, Dr. Eric Ding uh, on Twitter. Uh, it, it, just uh, a great, great feed. Dr. Feigelding, thanks so much for dropping by today. It's always great talking with you.